It's not funny, Taylor. Go! Let's go! Whoa. Yeah, that's not all. Remember when uh, Chuck was bullying you? Excuse me, can I talk to you for a second? I'm Haley Scott. I'm Jamie's mom. Uh-huh. Um, it, Jamie came home from school upset the other day. I guess your son was teasing him. Jamie? Is he the one with the cape? <laughs> wow. Five is a little old for a cape, don't you think? Maybe you should do him a favor, take it away from him, and then he won't get teased anymore. About the cape, anyway. Listen, honey, if your little brat doesn't stop picking on my son, not only will I give Jamie permission to kick his ass, but I'll be kicking your ass right alongside of him. Got that, bitch? <laughs> I'd like to see you try, little girl. Man, I'm just kind of crazy. Yeah, I haven't even told you about the slapping. They're slapping? Oh, they're slapping. Hey, Brooke, name a few people that Haley slapped uh, Jamie wants to warn Lydia. Oh, well, there's Rachel. Renee. Oh, and Nanny Carey. I want you to get the hell out of my house right now! Yeah, and in Mom's defense, Nanny Carey had that coming. <laughs> totally. Now that I think about it, you don't want to mess with Mom. Hey, Clay, did Mom ever attack you? Yeah, but it was with her words. You know full well this lying whore didn't sleep with Nathan, and you want to pay her $200,000? Oh, I don't want to. I simply suggested that it was an option. It's not an option, Clay. And while we're suggesting things, let me suggest that you are a huge reason why this is happening right now. Okay. You love it. The parties, the women, and you love having Nathan alongside you more than anything else. That's not fair. No? The picture, the one of that woman draped all over my husband? What party was that at, Clay? Who threw that party? I'm not saying you don't love him, because I know you do, but you love having him at your side more than anything else. You could have protected him from this. How, Haley? He's a grown man. So are you. Stop acting like it. Everybody way up north Cards and cornbread You should have heard the way That his mama called him baby Daddy called him boy His friends call him crazy
daughter, Lydia. This chest is full of memory. This is Jamie's first hit. Game-winning double. Baseball. He loves it. And I'll give you more than you For you were once a child of innocence And I see Son. you just the same Your burdens couldn't win or lose a thing Thank you Oh, I tell you once again You know, I do believe in magic. I was born and raised in a magic time. In a magic town. Among magicians. There he is. Chuck Skolnick. Most everybody else didn't realize we lived in that web of magic connected by the silver filaments of chance and circumstance. What are you doing, Brooke Davis, starting your next Close Over Bros? Maybe. But these days, my life is definitely more bros over clothes. But I knew it all along. Whoa, whose baby is that? This is our baby. This is Davis. Davis, can you wake up? Huh? Who's daddy? Is that you? See, this is my opinion. We all start out knowing magic. We are born with whirlwinds, forest fires, and comets inside us. We are born able to sing to birds and read clouds, and see our destiny in grains of sand. But then we get the magic educated right out of our souls. We get it churched out, spanked out, washed out, and combed out. We get put on the straight and narrow, and told to be responsible. Hey! Oh, oh. Go wash up for dinner. Okay. Told to act our age. And you know why we were told that? Because the people doing the telling were afraid of our wildness and youth. And because the magic we knew made them ashamed and sad of what they'd allowed to wither in themselves. After you go so far away from it, you can't really get it back. You can have seconds of it. Just seconds of knowing and remembering. When people get weepy at movies, it's because in that dark theater, the golden pool of magic is touched just briefly. Then they come out into the hard sun of logic and reason again, and it dries up. And they're left feeling a little heart sad and not knowing why. When a song stirs a memory, When motes of dust, turning in a shaft of light, takes your attention from the world. When you listen to a train passing on a track at night in the distance, and you wonder where it might be going. You step beyond who you are and where you are. Just take it 
For the briefest of instants, you have stepped into the magic realm. That's what I believe.